And this is a sikha on the Kutta Sikha, Sikha Chof, Parshas Vayachi, Sikha Beis. And the topic is that we find in this week's Parsha that Yaakov Avinu instructed that Levi and Yosef shouldn't bury him and Menashe and Ephraim should take their place. And so we're going to learn in the Sikha, number one, why Levi and Yosef didn't participate in this mitzvah. What is it about Levi and Yosef that doesn't allow them to be involved in burying Yaakov? Number two, we're going to learn how this fits with Moshe, who was himself from Shevet Levi, helping to bury Yosef. He helped take out later by the Gulas Mitzrayim. He took out Atmos Yosef. And number three, we're going to learn what is the deeper connection between Levi and Yosef and Menashe and Ephraim, that because of that, Menashe and Ephraim were the ones to take their places. The Pasuk says, Vayisu Oisei Bono of Arza Canaan, and his sons carried him to the land of Canaan, meaning that the Shvatim carried the Oren of Yaakov to the land of Canaan. And Rashi says, Vakavel Lahem Mokim, he established for them a place where each of them should be, Gimel and Mizrach, three should be to the Mizrach, V'chein L'dalad Ruchi, so to in all four directions, V'chasirdin L'masa Machin, and Shalt Golem, Nikvu Khan, the way they were arranged in the Midbar, that's how they were arranged here, around the Oren. And then it goes on to explain that Levi Laisa, Levi shouldn't carry, Shu Asid Lasis is Oren, because he is destined in the future to carry the Oren, V'yesuf Laisa, and Yesuf shouldn't carry, L'fishu Humelech, because he's a king, Rather, Menashe and Ephraim will be in their place. And the question is, how does it make sense that Yosef didn't help if Yaakov made Yosef swear on his Hassanim in Mitzrayim? He gave his father his word. He swore to him that he would carry him from Mitzrayim. How do we understand that over here, he didn't actually carry him? And so too regarding Levi. Levi would carry the Oren in the distant future. And so the question is, why would that stop Levi from this mitzvah? Bachlal, it's a mitzvah to be Isaac with the mess, and especially in this case where the mess was his very father. So why would something in the distant future stop Levi from a mitzvah that's over here in the present? And the explanation is that Rashi actually answers this question by adding at the end, Menashe Ephraim Yiu Tachteim. What Rashi is saying here is not just that Menashe Ephraim will take their places physically, but rather that they're Tachteim as their Shluchim, they're their messengers. And so it comes out that Yosef and Levi, they only physically didn't participate in the mitzvah. But they did do the mitzvah through their shluchim. Like we know that shluchim shal adam kamaisai. And so it comes out that Yosef and Levi did not lose out from this mitzvah, and it's not that they didn't participate in this mitzvah, they very much did participate in the mitzvah, it's just that they did it through their shluchim. Based on this, another thing fits really well. If we look at the beginning of Rashi's parish, he starts off by saying, it says, Vayisu oisei banov, says Rashi, v'loi b'nei banov, and not his son's sons. And he also adds later, Ella Atam, rather only you. And then he continues and says that Menashe and Ephraim carried the Oren of Yaakov. So how does that fit? He said, Veloi Bnei Bonov, and not his son's sons. Ella Atam, rather only you should be the ones to do it. You, the sons of Yaakov. And then at the end we see that Menashe and Ephraim did participate. However, now we could understand it because Menashe and Ephraim did not do it as individuals, but rather as the Shluchim of Yosef and Levi. And and so it comes out that they didn't do it as separate individuals, but rather as the shluchim and the shluchim shel adam kemaisei of Yosef and Levi. The question now is that on a deeper level, the pnimis yenonim, we're not just going to say that Menashe and Ephraim took the place. Of Yosef and Levi, but rather we have to understand it in such a way that they're connected to them. If they took their place, it means that there's some connection between them. And so, on a deeper level, we have to understand that it makes sense that Menashe and Ephraim took the place of Yosef since they are his sons, so they have a connection to him. But what's their connection to Levi? And this question is not going to be answered until the very, very end of the Sikha. First, we're going to have a series of other questions, and afterwards, through answering all those other questions, we're about to come back to this question and answer it as well. 
So we'll understand this by answering the question of a farshim on a Rashi says, Rashi says, Levi Laisa, and the reason is Shuhu Asid Lasis says Aaron, because he's destined to carry the Aaron uh, with the Luchas. And so the question is, it says that Moshe carried the Aaron of Yasef when they left Mitzrayim, as it says, Vaikach Moshe as Atmos Yasef Imai. And this is even though he was from Levi, and within Levi itself, he was from Kahas, and Kahas was the ones that actually carried the Aaron from among Shevet Levi itself, it was specifically Kahas. So how do we understand that Levi Laisa, because he's destined to carry the Aaron, then how is it that Moshe carried the Aaron of Yasef later on, he's also from Levi, and within Levi itself, he's from Kahas. So the lead-up to the answer is, the explanation is, it's known that the start of Tzaras HaShibud, we're going to see that there's Tzaras HaShibud, there's Masay Shibud, which is discussed in the Farshim. So when it comes to Tzaras HaShibud, it's known that it only began after the passing of Yaakov. What does this mean? That Yaakov held off Tzaras HaShibud. And so it's understood that taking Yaakov out of Mitzrayim was another step that allowed the Golis, because Yaakov being alive in Mitzrayim didn't allow the Tzaras HaShibud to happen. And so to Yaakov being in Mitzrayim, even after his passing, would not allow for the full Golis to happen. And so taking Yaakov out of Mitzrayim was another step that allowed the Golis to begin. This actually explains another thing to us. We just said that Yosef Laisa and Levi Laisa for seemingly technical reasons, but now we can understand it on a much deeper level. But now we can understand on a much deeper level why it is that Levi and Yosef didn't participate in the burial. Because we find that Levi and Yosef were similar to one another and also similar to Yaakov and that they were above the Shibud and they didn't let it happen. So regarding Yosef, the Medrash says that as long as he was alive, there was no Masai of Mitzrayim. And regarding Levi, Rashi himself says that as long as any of the Shvatim were alive, there was no Shibud. And Levi lived the longest. Rashi tells us, the reason the Torah tells us the age of Levi is because the Gullus and the, 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 the Shibud didn't fully start until the passing of the last of the Shvatim. And Levi was the last, so that way we figure out, we could calculate when the Shibud began. And by Levi, it's even more, because even after the Shibud started for all of Klai Yisrael, there was no Shibud, there was no Golis Mitzrayim on Shevet Levi. And so now we can understand why Levi and Yasef didn't carry the Oren. Since it's connected to Shibud, like we said, taking Yaakov out of Mitzrayim allowed for the Shibud to happen. And they don't let Shibud happen. And it's actually hinted in the reasons. It's hinted to in the reasons that Rashi mentions. Mepharshim explained the reason Shevet Levi were above the Shibud is because they would carry the Aaron. The Aaron's connected to Teira, and the Teira is higher than Shibud, and so they were higher than the Shibud. And because Yosef was king, like Rashi says, Levi la because he's destined to carry the Aaron. And Yosef la because he's a king. And because Yosef was king, that's why Mitzrayim had no power over him. He was shailat on them. Not only weren't they shailat on him, he was shailat on them. And that's why the two of them were not, did not go into Shibud. There was no Shibud related to them, because they're above the Shibud. Levi is connected to the Torah, which is higher than the Shibud. And Yosef ruled over Mitzrayim, and certainly Mitzrayim did not rule over him. And so that's why they didn't carry the Aaron of Yaakov. Now if we bring it to Moshe, Moshe carrying Atzma Yosef, whereas Moshe carrying Atzma Yosef is, is the total opposite. By Yaakov, taking Yaakov out of Mitzrayim is connected to the Gullah's beginning. So we, that's, that doesn't fit with Shevet Levi. But by carrying Atzma Yosef, that was part of the Gullah. Like it says, Ki ashbe as bnei Yisrael lemer, pakeid yifkeid el kim eschem, Hashem will remember you, valisa mitzatzmei semizei itchem, and you'll take my bones together with you out of here. So we see that taking Yosef out of Mitzrayim is connected to Hashem remembering the Yidin and taking them out of Golos. And so it, not only is it okay for Shevet Levi to participate in it, it should specifically become from Shevet Levi. And within Shevet Levi itself, from the greatest of Shevet Levi, which, are, which was Moshe. And so it comes out that taking Yaakov out of Mitzrayim was connected to starting the Shibud. That's removed from Shevet Levi. But taking Yosef out of Mitzrayim is connected to the Gula. And so that is actually not only 
not only could it be from Shevet Levi, but it should be from Shevet Levi, and from Shevet Levi itself, it should be from the greatest among Shevet Levi, because Shevet Levi is above the Gullus, and the greatest of them is the most above it, and so something connected to leaving the Gullus, like taking out Atzma Seisav, should be done through, through them. This actually now creates a question back on the original teaching that Menashe and Ephraim took the place of Levi and Yasef. And the question is, since Levi and Yasef were above the Shibud, then why did they have Shluchim to take their place? We said Shluch Shladim Kamaisei. Why did they have Shluchim to take their place? They're not supposed to be connected to the Shibud. By having a Shlich, it's saying that they were connected to the Shibud. They were connected to removing Yaakov from Mitzrayim. They were connected to to moving along the process of the Shibud through their Shluchim. Why did they have Shluchim if they're above the Shibud? And again, over here, we have to answer a different question before we answer this one. So first we have to understand, how can it be that by the Brisbane of Sarim it was said, Kiger ye Zaracha. Zaracha means your offspring, all of your offspring. So Kiger ye Zaracha Be'eretz Le'elohem. Va'avodum so by Brisbane of Sarim, Avram Avinu was told that all of his offspring were, gonna, were, were to be slaves and would be enslaved in a, in a foreign land for 400 years and then Shev and Levi weren't in the Shibud. And another problem with that is we know that it's the Va'avodim V'inu Esam Arbi Me'eshana which brings about the next part which is the, the Aliyah that comes about through the Golis which is that they come out with a Rechush Gadol so how could, we remove, how could we remove an entire shevet from this? How are they removed from this principle of Sarim and from the positive, positive aliyah that comes from it afterwards? The explanation is that shevet Levi being above, above the Shibud is not because they had nothing to do with Gauls and Mitzrayim. It's not that all of Klai Yisrael was in Mitzrayim and they were doing two different things. The rest of Klai Yisrael was in Shibud and shevet Levi happened to be there geographically, but they were in a totally different place. They were learning Torah. That's not what it, that's not what it was. But rather, it's part of it. It's part of the Shibud. They weren't removed from Gauls Mitzrayim. They weren't removed from the Shibud. It was part of the Gauls Mitzrayim requires that there should be a Shevet Levi that's there, but that they, are, they themselves are above the Shibud. Because the point of Gauls Mitzrayim is not the Gauls itself, it's the Geula. And in order that the Yidin wouldn't get lost and completely lost inside the Golas of Mitzrayim, and to an extent that they can, can't afterwards have the Gula, Shevet Levi was above it. And their role was to help the Yidin to be Mashpi on them. And so it comes out that they are part of it. Part of Golas Mitzrayim requires that there should be a section, a segment of Kalah Yisrael, which is Shevet Levi, that's above the Golas, and that uplifts the rest of the Yidin, and so that when the time for the Gula comes, the Yidin should be right to that Gula. And so it's a sort of partnership or as the Rebbe says over here, it says, Kala Nefesh, Lashen Yachid, that came to Mitzrayim. They were one Nefesh. So it's sort of a partnership, or even more so, it's like different body parts that we can't separate them and say they have nothing to do with one another. But rather, it's all different elements of one entity. And same, so too over here. Part of Golis Mitzrayim requires both the Golis element, but also that a segment of Kala Yisrael should remain above the Golis in order to lift up the rest of the Eden and and allow for the opportunity that later on down the road they should be right to the Gula. And so it comes out that Shevet Levi was part of the Golas of Mitzrayim. They were part of the Shibud. And the role that they played was to help the Yidden. And this now answers our other question. Why did Levi and Yosef have Shluchim if they're above the Shibud? Because they're not fully above the Shibud in a way they have nothing to do with it. They were above the Shibud in order to help those that were in the Shibud. So this is why they needed Shluchim to take their place. Even though they didn't carry the Arin of Yaakov, they needed to give the others the strength to get out of Golis. And they did that. How? What was the bridge that connected them? That was through having Shluchim. They had Shluchim that were making the Golis, so to speak, happen. They were participating and connecting to the Yidin that were in the Golis. They were helping take out Arin, the Arun of Yaakov, which allowed the Shibut to happen. It was happening through Levi and Yosef, meaning that they were giving them the Kayach, they were giving them the strength that even though they're making the Golis now begin and the Golis is starting, but they have a connection to Levi and Yosef through their Shluchim.
now we can answer an earlier question we asked what is the on a deeper level what's the connection between Menashe and Ephraim to Levi that as a result of that deeper connection they were his shluchim. so we're going to explain over here that really we could ask the same thing in a way about Yosef yes Menashe and Ephraim were the sons of Yosef but is there something deeper about their connection that because of that they were her shluchim? and we're, as we're going to see that each one of them Yosef and Levi had a different shliach either Menashe or Ephraim based on their deeper connection to each of them so this is why Yaakov chose Menashe and Ephraim to be the shluchim for Yosef and Levi since each of them Yosef and Levi were above the Golis in different ways and these different ways were reflected in Menashe and Ephraim so let's start with Yosef we know that Yosef is a direct continuation of Yaakov it says that y- y- Yosef is the full expression of who Yaakov is and Yaakov we know was completely above the Golis like we learned he was completely above Mitzrayim and that's what we find also by Yosef he was above Mitzrayim even more so he ruled over Mitzrayim so the idea of Yaakov and Yosef is that they're completely and entirely they're totally above the Golis however Levi and we're talking over here also about Shevet Levi didn't rule over Mitzrayim and even more so they they continued living throughout the time of Golis in Mitzrayim we had Shevet Levi at the time and still they weren't in it they were there but they weren't in the Shibud and they even gave Yidin the strength to survive it so they stayed in the time of Golis they didn't dominate the Golis didn't rule over it they didn't stand above it they went into it and even more so they helped the Yidin to survive it and eventually to bring the Gula through Moshe who came from Shevet, Le- from Shevet Levi and so this is also reflected like the Rebbe explains in the Sicha at length and it's found in even greater length in the Sicha and Chilak Tezvav this is reflected in Menashe and Ephraim Menashe is Kinnashani Elikim is Beis Avi this is like a Yid saying that he's forgetting he's forgetting where he came from and the reason the Yid reminds himself that he's forgetting is in order that he shouldn't forget and the point of not forgetting is that he should stay above the Golis and not be impacted and pulled down by the Golis and that's like Yosef and Yaakov that they were above the Golis whereas Ephraim his name was Ki Ephraim Elikim Be'eretz Ani that it's in Eretz Ani it's in the Golis that over there not only doesn't he get sucked into the Golis and pulled down by the Golis but he is able to survive the Golis and bring the Gula through the Golis so we have two different ways of relating to the Golis one is that a person rises above the Golis and even rules over the Golis and he's not affected by it in any way that's the way of Yaakov, Yosef and Menashe and there's another way where it is that he goes into the Golis and he finds a way to be Mahapech, to Choshech, to Ur and not, so not only doesn't the Golis rule over him but he's able to go into the Golis and transform the Golis to bring about through that very Golis the Gula we know that all of the Yidin are called Yosef like it says in Tehillim Noye Katsayin Yosef and regarding Shevet Levi, the Rambam says that each and every person is able to also be like Shevet Levi. And the reason is that Yidin are called both Yosef and are similar to Shevet Levi, since every Yid has the ability that not only won't the Gullus control him, whichever Yid has the ability in that, and that's from the Yosef part in him, but even more so, the Yid has the ability that he will control the Gullus and he'll turn the Gullus into Gullah. That's the Levi part. And the order, the Seder Advarim, is if we look at the words, that we quoted in Rashi first the Yid is like Yosef that he is currently in the present the king he says why sh- why Yosef Laisa ki hu melech now he's a melech meaning that that's the first thing that's the that's the haiva so first the Yid has to be like Yosef that he's currently in the present in the moment right now a king that he can be above Golis and then a Yid will be like Levi that he is destined ki hu osid he is destined in the future to carry the Aaron. So first is the ki Melech, ki hu Melech. He is now currently a Melech, and then he osid losses his Aaron. Then afterwards he get to the place to be like Levi. That's his next step, which he is osid losses his Aaron. Which the Aaron, like we mentioned earlier, is connected to Torah and Torah is Ur, which that allows a Yid to turn the darkness of the Golas into the Gula, which will fully be. When Mashiach comes, Bemheru Bemenu Mamash.